Welcome to Access 2010 Basic Queries. I'm Trainer Lori. So what are access queries? The questions that you have about the data. Uh, for example, sorts. Uh, we're going to look at select queries and even parameter queries. This is the workhorse of the database, or the tractor, <laughs> if you will. Uh, this does all the work to find the data that you seek. So we're going to look at the basic queries. I want you to think of um, a table as a bucket and the data as the little blocks that go in the bucket. And if that's true, then a query is nothing more than a lid to look into the bucket. It is not the bucket. It is not a copy of the bucket. It is simply a lid looking into the bucket. So when we create a query, we are creating a way to look into the table. Uh, if we don't want to see all the records, then we cover up those those uh, holes on the lid. And we do that through something called criteria. So if you don't want to see all the records, then you change the criteria. And you can see this is what a query looks like in Design View and in Data Sheet View. So we create it by clicking Create, Query. That's in the uh, Queries, and then Query Design. The first question you have to answer is, which tables do I want to show? And if you do not know which tables, you can close the show table box and then uh, later open it back up using the show table button. We don't know which tables, so we need to know relationships first. And you'll find relationships on the data tools, database tools tab. So in our relationships, we must know what tables are related before we can create a query because all tables in the query must be related. Then you need to know the question. So I have all this data, what's my question? Well, let's say I want to know what products came from what supplier. Based on that, I know I need two tables, my products table and my suppliers table. So now I can add those tables. To add them, I simply click it and then click add or double click on it. Now be careful. This, these are two tables that are not related. Notice there is nothing in between them. As a result, you're going to get the Cartesian product, the dreaded Cartesian product. In other words, my products table has 77 records. My orders table has 830 records. What I will get instead of either of those numbers is multiplication of those so that I will get 63,910 records. This Cartesian product is named for Descartes. And what we want to do to fix it is to right click on the table that we don't want to remove it. This is a, a properly made. You can see in the relationships grid, this is the relationships grid, that it is a related, uh, these two tables are related, so it will work. Now what we want to do is add fields, and there's three ways to add them. We can double click on the field, we can click and drag the field, or we can use the drop down arrow. So now we've created uh, three fields in our query. And you can see that one has come from the products table and two have come from the suppliers table. To view the results, I want to either click the view button to take me da to data sheet view, or you can also hit the run button, just so you know. The run button is available. Um, in fact, it's the only way you can run advanced queries. But right now we have two options. I can either view it or run it. So I want to see what it looks like. And that's what it looks like in data sheet view. So I can see the results of all the products by supplier. However, if I want to tape over those holes that I mentioned, um, in other words, I don't want to see all the data. I want to see just certain data. For example, I know that there's a company name. Uh, it's exotic something. Well, all I have to do is type in exotic and then star. Just like here, I wrote, typed in C star because I want to find all the contact names. I know it starts with a C. And as soon as I do that and hit enter, Access puts in the proper code. The proper code has the word like in it and then quotes around what I'm looking for. So whenever you have the star, it will always have the like. This is important for later when we get into parameter queries. The good news is Access does it for us here in Criteria. And when I view the data, I can see just those that are exotic liquids, and the contact name starts with the letter C.
Let's look at some of those criteria operators. We saw that the star always has like and the quotes around it, and that means any missing character. And this one is just like an Excel, greater than 5. Now what if I have quotes around it and it's not a star? That means that specific text must be in. Uh, that's what I'm looking for, that specific text. In this case, FL meaning Florida. That means it'll only find Florida records. However, the next one, this is a mathematical symbol to show off the word not. So in this case, a not Florida. So it'll find everything except Florida. Now this is code called Boolean code and is null means no data. It does not mean zero. Zero is data, uh, but this contains no data. In other words, I don't have an address. I don't have a zip code, something that I'm looking for. And the opposite of that is just like what we saw up with the mathematical operator. It's still the word not, only this time it's written out again in Boolean, Boolean code named after George Boole. And then you can see here that with a, a date, it um, always puts a pound sign around dates. And then notice between and and are both capitalized. So between and then the first date and the second date, and that is code. So let's try it. Let's say that the question is which products over $25 are on order? And we're pulling it from our products table, and these are our fields, product name, units on order, and unit price. So do we need to do criteria, set criteria for products? And the answer is no. I want all the products that fit those other two criteria. So the next one would be over $25. Well, where would that fit? Well, that would fit under unit price, and that would look like greater than 25. Notice there's no dollar sign. You wouldn't want to put that in, because in Access, the dollar sign is formatted like that automatically. Now, this is where we would probably get into trouble. If I teach this hands-on, I can tell you this is where people always get into trouble because they don't know what to do next. How do I know if it's on order or not? If you're not sure, look at the data. Go into your other view and look at the data and it will tell you because you'll see that units on order is a whole bunch of numbers that are either zero or a number that's greater than zero. So if it's on order, it would be a number that is greater than zero and then that's what it would look like, and you'll find the answer. Let's look at the parameter query. This is also a select query. It just has a little bit more code that allows us to have this little box instead of me having to uh, go into design view all the time. Think about your users that are going to be using this database. Do you really want them going into design view to look for a certain last name? Probably not. So instead, when they uh, try to open the database or open that query, it'll say last name, and now I simply type in the box last name and it will find just the records I look for. This is an instant filter. So how do we do it? Well, it's down in criteria, but now we're going to use some code. Just like we saw like and those quotes was code, and between and and, that's all code. Well, this is code, and that is that whatever you want your prompt to be, so what's a prompt? That's the text that's going to prompt me to enter a last name. Whatever your prompt is going to be needs to be in square brackets. Please note they are square brackets. They're not uh, squiggly brackets or they're not parentheses. They're simply square brackets. And then when you run it, it will say last name. You type in the name that you want. You click OK and you will find just Andrew Fuller. We have some options to go with that. It's very easy to use. Uh, you can have multiple um, uh, parameter prompts, uh, but know how to use them. This is an AND. That means, for example, I have both last name and first name on the same line. When they're on the same line, that makes it an AND. That means you must have both. So, for example, first it'll ask, beca first because it is the first one, last name, I put in a last name, I click OK, then it will come up with first name, and I must put in a first name. And then I click uh, OK, and I will get my answer. We just looked at AND, that means they're on the same line, but now we're going to have them on the OR line. You see that, the next one down? By the way, you get up to seven ORs, uh, it, just uh, in the lines there. So now, and the other rule with um, using an OR is you must have a different prompt. I can't say last name, last name. 
because it's already used. So I could say last name, another last name, first last name, second last name, etc. So first it asks me for the first one and I put it in. Then I must have another one and I put it in and then I will find what I'm looking for. This is great if you're looking for say three different months. So you could say first month, second month, third month. So that way you don't have to uh, say between and and. You can choose uh, just by using the or option mentioned earlier, what if I know the last name or the first name, but I don't have both? So that's where I would use an OR. Instead of putting the OR in the same column, I would put it on the second, in the second column. So now, I don't have the last name. So I leave it blank, but I click OK. And then it gives me the option for first name. I type in Andrew, and I will get what I'm looking for. Keep this in mind, if I had those both on the same line, it will give me nothing. If I I left one blank. Okay, This is the only way that you'll be able to leave one of them blank is by using the OR. Now sometimes I don't know how to spell the last name, so I'd like to be able to use that wildcard star or asterisk. And so in that case I simply put some code. Remember that code like? I use that code like before the bracket and now I can use the star inside my parameter. What if I don't know uh, to use the star? If your users don't know that and you don't want to have to explain all that in the prompt. You only get 64 characters, so you don't have a lot of room for explanation inside this prompt. Then I can put some code, some more code. Af uh, I put the like before, but after, after my bracket, now I use the and symbol, also known as the ampersand, with a um, quote, star, quote. And now Access will not put that code in for me. I have to know this code here. But when I do that, I can now just put in D. I don't know how to spell it, so I just put in D, OK. And it will show me everything that starts with D. So it's very convenient. If you want a date query prompt, you can use the same thing with the uh, prompt. Remember we saw between an AND with dates in there? Well, now I'm going to put in prompts. Start date and ending date inside. And now, at first, it'll ask me for the first date, and then my second date, and it will show me all the records between those two dates. And I can choose whatever date. If you'd like to just show all dates after a specific start date, up to today, just needs a little more code. Now you put between, and then your prompt, and then and date two parentheses, an open and a closed parentheses. And when you start typing it, it's going to recognize it as a function. And it'll start showing you all the functions that are available. Well, we just want date. That means today. And it will automatically show you all the dates from the first date that you put in and then today. That's all for today. See you next time.